Hi, this is Brian Forster, and today we are exploring in the Valley of the Kings, located quite close to the modern and ancient city of Luxor. So in order to get to the Valley of the Kings and the tombs, you have to ride in these little train-like things, and it takes about 20 minutes or less to get from the visitor area to this very desolate, as you can see, complex. Of course, the Valley of the Kings was chosen as a royal burial place because of its incredible dryness and the fact that the temperature inside of the tombs is naturally climate controlled. But the biggest mystery that we're going to explore is the fact that I find it highly unlikely that the dynastic Egyptians carved these huge gallery spaces in the limestone bedrock. I think they were an inheritance from a much older, technologically advanced civilization. Because how you could possibly hack these out by hand, I have no idea whatsoever. So the main thing to look at is the sheer size of these galleries and these tunnels and passageways in the limestone bedrock. And you can see the surfaces are covered with hieroglyphs and the surfaces are incredibly flat. Another thing is there are depressions in the walls and rooms off to the sides and they're almost always, if not always, bilaterally symmetrical. So here you see a niche on one side and a niche on the other side in exactly the same position. Unfortunately, I know nothing about <clears throat> hieroglyphs themselves, and my fascination is not so much with the dynastic people, though I very much respect their brilliant history. It's these strange, out-of-place objects and just the galleries themselves. Now here is a massive granite box with crude hieroglyphics carved on the surfaces in comparison to the box itself. And how was that box created? The granite for the box almost undoubtedly came from Aswan, which is to the, uh, to the south. And I would estimate that that box by itself weighs approximately 60 tons. Also, there is catastrophic damage to each of the boxes that we looked at. Is this the result simply of tomb robbers or something more catastrophic that happened in pre-dynastic times, the evidence of which we see in places like Karnak and Tanis and the Ramesseum and other locations? So once again, it's the sheer sense of scale of these massive tunnel systems that go into the bedrock in the Valley of the Kings, and of course all of, uh, of the Valley of the Queens as well. And we've recently learned that the Valley of the Kings and Valley of the Queens are connected by a series of tunnels. If you want to, you can pay an optional fee and go see Tutankhamun's burial, which is actually quite small. But it's these massive ones that I find particularly fascinating. Just the sheer volume and sense of scale. Now, technically, photographs were not allowed inside these chambers and tunnels until quite recently. So now simply what you do is you buy a separate photo ticket. And that is what allowed me to film in 4K video. So that's one of the wonderful things about present day. Egypt is that places that used to be forbidden access are now open. Now there you can see an interesting niche, and that niche area was stopped in terms of construction, and instead they had to go to the right because supposedly they knew that there was another tunnel system right behind that niche. So in order to create a separate tomb area, they had to make it jog to the right. And again, the great thing in recent times, places that were forbidden access to are now being opened, such as the Osiris Shaft, which I will be making a video about, and the fact that you could film 
and take photographs inside the Valley of the Kings in these massive chamber systems, which is excellent, because what's the point in even visiting these if you're not allowed to take photos and video? And how far does this tunnel system go, is my question. We weren't given access to the entire system, uh, but some of these are much more extensive than even what I have been able to film here, This, uh, what you're looking at. There you see some soot on the ceiling, uh, probably from dynastic or later times, from people living inside or maybe tomb robbers being in there. Beautiful bright colors. These, uh, most of these colors are the original from dynastic times. They haven't been retouched, but they're still brilliant. And here we are slowly walking out of one of these massive tombs. Incredibly impressive. And this is quite possibly one of the most uh, amazing of the ancient tomb systems, which is uh, accessible with the standard fee that you pay when you go into the Valley of the Kings. This is Meren Ptah's tomb, and it is hundreds of feet long, carved into the bedrock of limestone. And again, look on the left and right side, you see those depressions, which are bilaterally symmetrical. Whether they were actual, actually functional for what, I don't know. But it's the, the sense of scale <clears throat> which completely blows me away about exploring. We just keep descending and descending and descending into Marin Ptah's tomb. And further down. And then we have rooms off to the left and right hand side. It's a very complex tomb structure. And down and down we go. Hundreds of feet. Again, how these possibly could have been made by um, dynastic people with adzes and chisels and picks and shovels, I just, I don't believe it. I think this is a much older inheritance. And there you see a massive granite box lid. And going past there, we go even further down to where there are the remains of a giant box, again, having catastrophic damage to it. Most people would think the damage was done by tomb robbers, but we also see strange discoloration. You see the darker tones um, in on the surface of the stone there. And this box is very strange, so-called sarcophagus. Because as we go around to the side, you can see that there's a doorway into it. Whether that was original or created later, I don't know. And on the interior surface, again, these strange burn-like discolorations. And then this magnificent sarcophagus made of granite. It's uh, slightly rough in terms of texture. It could be that it was never completed, but it doesn't have the high polish of uh, many of the other giant granite statues which are located in Egypt. Just a beautiful, beautiful functional sculpture. And once again, the strange discoloration that you see, it's much more extensive on some of the other boxes located in other tombs. Also, you can pay an extra fee and you get access to other 
of these tunnel systems used as tombs, but um, I'm simply highlighting the ones that we were able to access with the standard fee that you pay along with a special ticket that allowed me to do this 4K video for the first time. I have taken photographs and short video clips in the past, but that was done in a clandestine nature, and it's wonderful now that you can do it freely simply by paying a fee of, I think it was approximately 15 US dollars. So again, the main part of this video is simply to show you the sense of scale of these huge tunnel systems in the Valley of the Kings. If you're interested, we have a tour of Turkey, which is full on in September of 2019, including Gobekli Tepe. Then in January of 2020, we're going to India to look at all of the examples of ancient machining, which are plentiful. And in March of 2020, my eighth trip to Egypt, I do it once a year, mainly looking at lost ancient high technology. And then right after that, we have a special ancient lost technology and metaphysics tour of Israel.